OK, well, tonight his lordship, Alan Sugar, returns to our TV screens once again, but this time to put a group of 16 to 17-year-olds through their paces in a new series called Junior Apprentice. Now, under the watchful eyes of Lord Sugar's aides, Nick Hewer and uh, Karen Brady, the teenagers will compete in tasks to prove whether or not they are worthy of a prize that could really see them uh, stepping up that career ladder. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon, madam. And she's buying any speciality cheese today. We've got a great special today on the Strathton Blue. Afternoon, sir. Interested in buying any cheese at all today? We've got a great daily special on a Strathton Blue. It's actually one of our best sellers. Zoe is in charge of selling the cheese of the day. Uh, she has a commanding presence and is using all uh, of her charms to get as many sales as possible. You look like a cheesy kind of fella. Interested in buying any cheese I at all today? Remarkable for a 16-year-old. Now, with ten candidates trying to prove themselves, it's going to get nasty, that's for sure. But is it important for teenagers to be focusing on their futures, or should they just concentrate on having some fun while they're still young? What do you think? Well, you see, I was one of those teenagers that really didn't like to go out and get hammered every night. So, for me, this is, is perfect, you know. What so... were you doing, selling cheese? No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I was working. I was working. I was still taking... I was still going out with all my mates, but I was behind the bar pulling their pints and and so I was still in the throng of it all and I still had a great time but I just wasn't into that you know drinking culture or I wanted to make money and I wanted to get a car and I wanted to do everything so I had three jobs at that age so I think it's really sensible. good were you yeah. thinking about did, did you know from an early age though did, that you set your sights on a on, on a singing career or career in entertainment did you know that much yeah I always knew I would be something to do with entertainment and and of course with with I always think with power comes money is power. So I knew that I wanted to put myself through night school and the only way I could do that was to get money. So I, I had two bar jobs and I worked through the day as well. I was really sensible. I wish I was like you when I was a teenager, <laughs> but I wasn't. Um, no, I, I mean, I just... I think it's a good thing that teenagers go out there and enjoy and embrace their teenage life. Because let's face it, you don't stay young forever, do you, Den? And... Um, <laughs> Um, and I think, you know, I was, I was singing at 15 and I earned money like you and I used to just blow it with my friends and go to three nightclubs a night. So I did all my living. I had an absolutely fantastic time. And I think for teenagers not to do that is not such a good thing because... But it doesn't mean that, that they're that's... exclusive though, does it? It doesn't mean that you, that you can't go out and, out and have a good time and have ambition like, like, like you've just said. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I don't think I was that ambitious really. I you mean, were, I wanted to be... You were I was singing. You were already starting out on your yeah, toes. Was... So you knew what you wanted to do with your life. I wanted to be in Les Miserables. That was it. And, um... But were you like Jane thinking that unless you made money you wouldn't be happy? Because no. that's pretty much what you thought, wasn't I it? Not. Yeah. I'm saying it gives you security. When you've got money behind you, I come from a very working class family and I knew that I had to for the career I wanted to do I had to go out and make money I needed a car to get me to the gigs I needed equipment to, so I could sing and the only way I could do that was to go out and get a job I didn't expect my parents to to do all that for me so I think I just lived for the here and now I had a great time I was very wild I got drunk that's why I'm in bed at nine o'clock these days no you're not you're a big liar you're so not I am she isn't. <laughs> well, that was so high pitched, my ears hurt. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but what I I'm don't... saying is, I think teenagers should. I don't think yeah, they should so feel guilty you... having a good time. No, they shouldn't. But, you know, you, you can do both. If, yeah. if at any point in your life you're going to have the energy mm. to work hard and play hard and burn the candle at both ends. That is the time. Mm. But I think, you know, to, to know what you want to do with your life is a blessing, not yeah. a curse. Yeah. I've still got friends at, at our age now, you know, I'm 37, that are still looking for their vocation in life. Mm. And it's, it's, it's really frustrating for them. So I'm so grateful that I, I knew from the get-go that I wanted to be a journalist. It doesn't matter, though, does it? I mean, it's just like, it doesn't matter if teenagers, if they're 15 or 16, don't know yet what they want to do. Do you know what I mean? And I, I feel that some of the teenagers that yeah. I've met, some, some of them through Matthew, that it's not necessarily their ambition, it's their parents ambition as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's their parents wanting yeah. to sort of... Don't you think of... it's really, you know, a lovely thing to see a, a young person, a teenager, with a work ethic? Mm -hmm. What were Isn't... you like here? Oh, I was a grafter. Yeah. Because I, like, you're, you know, I came from a similar background to you, Jane. You know, my mum and dad wanted the best for me, but, you know, they weren't able to put me through university and we didn't have cash to flash. So if I wanted to get myself um, to where I wanted to be, I had to, I had to make, my, make my own way there mm. as, as much as I could. So I did. I got I a job think... on a local paper and I 
built my credentials up and I, and, I'm, and I made it to London and I, I made you it to You were channelled though, weren't totally. you? Totally. Completely but, channelled. But channelled by day, drunk by night. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, I don't feel like I lost out on anything and eventually I, I got to where I needed to be and I still had a great time, probably a better time because the job that I, I landed... And now you're channelled by night and drunk by day, you've just switched it around. Exactly! <laughs> Which is what I'm a loose woman. <laughs> I just think, I mean, I, I, I didn't really have very much ambition. It's because I wasn't very academic either. I just, so I sort of associated um, th that, that with being academic. And I was actually going to, I was just going to fall into teaching. It was like, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And because I liked drama at school and fell into teaching. that when I was about four. Teaching. I know. I was Can you imagine? And I would have been the worst teacher in the entire... Well, I did that documentary, I know, remember? you were rubbish. I was absolutely rubbish. <laughs> but thank goodness, my dad, Vin the drag artist pointed out to me <laughs> that he didn't think that I should go that I should go down the teaching road so it was there it was him and my drama teacher that said why don't you try acting as a career and that's when I went to drama school thank goodness mm -hmm. because there would have been so many children failed every exam in my life <laughs> <laughs> if Miss Welsh was in charge oh. okay